and welcome to the Pole Shift News. Guys, um, I said yesterday in the video I'd uh, talk today about uh, the Maunder Minimum, what is setting up uh, the circumstances for, you know, a Grand Solar Minimum in our day today. And, you know, I have talked about this report, uh, the Livingston and Penn Report, you can find it if you just uh, type in on Google search, Livingston and Penn Report with regards to sunspots disappearing from around about 2015 or becoming less visible from 2015, you'll be able to find it. Um, I've religiously talked about this report because I think it's a great report. What they noticed is that the sunspot Umbria had become warmer by 45K and as a result of that, the magnetic field strength had decreased uh, in the sunspots by 77 gauze per year. And, you know, that coincides with some of the experiments that I've conducted, you know, when I've introduced, you know, um, uh, magnetic materials such as nibidium magnets into a heat source. You know, they, they completely lose their ability to hold on to that magnetism uh, or that magnetic field strength. So, you know, when things get hotter, you know, they lose their magnetic field and it's the same uh, effect that we see on the sun. Uh, I've got a few photos uh, because we're talking about the Umbria and, you know, uh, not, not a lot of people know what the Umbria is or the penumbria of the sun. So I've got a few images and we can, you know, just give you a quick idea as to what we're talking about with regards to sunspots. And then I think you get a better idea as to what's going on with why we're losing them with regards to this increase in heat. So let's do that. So I came across these uh, images on the Internet. Uh, this is from zoomschool.com and it, it labels the uh, penumbria and the umbria very well as well as the pores. First of all the pores don't have penumbrias uh, so they're like cold spots on the sun that look like sunspots but they're not actually classified as sunspots because they don't have penumbrias. But as you can see the penumbria is the outer region of the sunspot and the umbria is the inner region of the sunspot and that's what the Livingston and Penn report is talking about. So, you know, these sunspots can range in, you know, various sizes. On average, they're around about the size of the Earth, believe it or not. And, you know, on average, the Umbria is about 34, or oh, sorry, 3,400 degrees Celsius, which is about 37K. And, you know, on uh, recent uh, studies, they've, you know, the Livingston Pen or say recent, you know, this is back before, 2015 they had found that these sunspots uh, umbrias had increased by you know up to 4 45k so as a result of that they had lost um, you know or there was a decrease of 77 gauze in the sunspots and you know they are by all means uh, magnetic by nature sunspots are and you know the temperature is increasing like we have done experiments on and you some of you guys have seen these then what will happen is it, the magnetic field will decrease and therefore you know the sunspots are going to become harder to form on the surface of the sun so what it is that's causing the sun to do this is obviously it's heating up a little bit more and you know you could beg the question then is the activity of the sun um, you know changing on regular cycles uh, because the cycles of the sun and you know these uh, Maund minimums, Dalton minimums are less in terms of years than you know when, when we're talking about what's going on with our own earth with regards to magnetism. Uh, they, you know, they're very relatively short periods of time as opposed to you know what takes place with regards to the magneto that generates our magnetosphere and our magnetic poles on the earth. You know, in terms of that, you know, you're talking hundreds of thousands of years as opposed to just uh, hundreds of years. So, you know, for you out there, you guys out there that wanted to know a little bit more about what's going on with the Grand Solar Minimum at the moment, which is what is being talked about on a lot of other channels as well as this one, then, you know, you get an idea now as to why we enter periods of times such as the Mond Minimum or the Grand Solar Minimum that we're in right now. You can see it's because of the correlation between the increase in temperature inside the Umbra and as a result of that it decreases the magnetism and it makes it a little bit harder for sunspots to form in the first place and that's why they're dropping off 
so the sun's surface may have increased or something else uh, it's it's not clear-cut science guys uh, you know we're still learning as we're going on but you know there it is there's that correlation uh, correlation sorry with regards to an increase in temperature and a decrease in magnetism again what we see over the arctic regions of our planet where it's very cold is strong uh, magnetic intensities so if those uh, arctic climates start to shift then you know you can understand that it might be uh, favorable for the mag uh, the arctic regions dragging the uh, um, sorry not the arctic region the magnetic poles moving might be an indication of it dragging that temperature along with it you know it gets a little bit confusing because which one is which which one's manipulating the other one is the cold climate attracting magnetism or is the magnetism migrating attracting the climate you know for the last hundred years the earth has been migrating uh, especially over the northern hemisphere you know this is the one that we're mainly interested in there is activity going on on the southern hemisphere and i will talk about that a lot more um, as soon as we get our magnetometers in those regions of australia but for now i'm concentrating on the magnetic poles over the northern hemisphere and trust me whatever happens over our northern hemisphere does affect the whole planet in the turn anyhow but which one is which which one's manipulating which well we first saw the magnetic poles migrating uh, the last hundred years so we know the poles were moving before the arctic climate so at least for earth's sake we know that the magnetic pole migrated and then we started to see the uh, arctic climate migrate along with it it's clear when we look at the video that i put up today uh, sorry yesterday that you could see a diminishing region over the magnetic pole over canada and the magnetic pole over si siberia slightly increasing and as a result you could see the temperature over siberia russia going into china getting colder and then canada getting warmer and a few of you guys had um you know uh, chimed in and said gene you know what temperatures have been moderately be warmer over the last few years in canada during the winter periods so that that stands to reason then that there is a connection uh, not just with our earth with regards to uh, temperatures and magnetism but also on our sun but is our sun uh, regulating the uh, magnetism in the same way it's it's all up for a debate guys you know this is uh completely untouched territory and the more we learn about it the, the more we will find out uh, but we'll say this you know when we do experience less sunspots on our sun's surface as a result of that uh, it makes the sun's output less and as a result of that we have the heliosphere which is like a big bubble that inflates all over our um solar system protects all the planets and what happens in a low solar output or low production of sunspots is it shrinks in and as a result of that we get more cosmic radiation and it seems to be you know there are definitely uh, links between what takes place in our sun with regards to sunspots and what takes place on our earth with regards to uh, the magnetic reversal and the magnetosphere weakening you know they both um, seem to deliver the same results and that's uh, increase in cosmic radiation uh, which when we have a healthy magnetosphere pushes that um, radiation out or the cosmic radiation out and you know when we have a healthy sun which is producing sunspots we not only get warmer climates but we also get less cosmic radiation in our solar system let alone that's able to penetrate our atmosphere into the earth so <clears throat> We are facing a double uh, cadaldrum here with regards to those uh, cosmic rays coming from the sun's low output and the Earth's weakened magnetosphere. So guys, I hope I've cleared up a little bit uh, with regards to the grand solar minimum, at least in this video. Uh, at least you know now uh, when people are talking about umbrias or penumbrias or pores, you'll have a bit of more of an idea of what it is they're actually um, talking about and hopefully you'll have gained a little bit of knowledge as to why the grand solar minimum is taking place. It's all down to the temperature within the umbria increasing and as a result the magnetic um, anomalies within them 
um, not being favourable to support a sunspot forming in the first place. So um, there you go, guys. Um, we've had some uh, breakthroughs with regards to items being delivered today. We have now got the battery carrier, so now we can send out at least four of our magnetometers. Uh, I've been trying to get in touch with a few people. Brad in um, Virginia, give us a call on Skype and uh, we'll link up and uh, I'll get one of those sent over to you straight away and we can start getting some data uh, coming back to the website. Over the next couple of days, I'm gonna build a dedicated page for our six magnetometers that are gonna go out straight away. I've got more components coming in now, four more magnetometers to be built and distributed elsewhere around the world. And you know, guys, um, in a nutshell, that's it. Um, is there anything else I wanted to say? Uh, no, I have got a video on the back burner for some of those, that the, you know, because obviously you've noticed the great uh, noise reduction with regards to my computer. Um, you know, I was going to just do a quick video for a few people uh, that might be interested in, you know, just seeing how I managed to uh, service the computer because, you know, you might have the same problem one day. You might notice that CPU fans kicking in a lot more than it should do. And as a result, you know, I, I mean, you can see what I did. Uh, you know, I literally stripped the computer down, uh, re-cemented the heat sinks back on the CPUs and in general cleaned it all out. And can you hear the fan right now? It's as silent as a baby sleeping. So, you know, you might need to know how to do that. It's just basically cleaning out those veins within the heat sink uh, that cause the CPU down. Because the fan in itself can do, you know, great wonders. But of course, if the air circulation isn't there for it to do its job properly, it's, it's pointless. So, I'll, you know, I might throw that video in tomorrow for you guys. Um, link down there, guys. You know, we're an observatory. We build equipment that monitors what's going on and we relate to the public regardless of whether we feel it is a detriment to you, whether it's going to worry you or what. You know, it's down for you guys because you are adults at the end of the day. The majority of people that view these videos are adults. And, you know, I think you need to know one way or another. Um, I don't think it's a good idea to put your head beneath the sand with regards to these issues if you believe that they are, you know, very serious and you know affecting the world on a grand scale you should still be of the knowledge of them um, at the end of the day the purpose of all this is to put you in a position where you are confident with the information that you've got at hand uh, probably as a result of watching some of these videos you know what time you're in right now and you know you have the opportunity to act that's the main thing having the opportunity to act and hopefully, you know, we'll be able to make some um, predictions as to uh, predictions and forecasts as to when things are likely to really get serious. And, you know, it's fine if you leave it till then. But just bear in mind, at that point, more people will know about these things and those things that you're probably sourcing at that time might get harder to get hold of. So, you know, that's the whole purpose of what we do at the observatory. It's, it's about public knowledge. And information and getting that information out to those people that uh, are seeking it at the end of the day um, okay I won't go on uh, links down there support our observatory and our efforts uh, you can do that on PayPal or patron and we just broke past the thousand dollar mark on patron which is great for some reason we didn't breach that territory for a good three weeks for some reason but you know we're, we're past it now for some reason and that's great you can support us on pay PayPal as well if you want. It's up to you. And of course, you know, guys, none of it is mandatory. You get the information regardless. But the point is this. If a few people support it, we can get the information out to the vast majority of people. And we're building subscribers now, guys. We're on 21,300, is it? Something like that. So, you know, I think that's... Uh, in a unique subject which is very rare there isn't many people talking about what we talk about on this channel there isn't certainly many people out there that deliver what we do with regards to not just talking about it but actually building the equipment I think that's the big difference for our supporters they they regularly tell us that, you know you're not just talking about it Gene you're actually building equipment and you're monitoring it and, the, and let's face it we monitor it every three seconds at a massive resolution 
and uh, you know, a date with some of the bigger organisations that you might know don't even monitor it on that sort of resolution. So you know, we do more than talk on this channel. So the links are down there, and I'll say what I usually do, guys. I'll catch up with the weekend. Maybe tomorrow I'll do that video and talk about a few other things along with you know uh, cleaning out the CPU on the computer. So so what I usually do. Bye for now.